Um, I'm Samantha Subin. I'm a markets um, and technology reporter at CNBC. I cover artificial intelligence. Um, I'm going to be moderating our panel today about AI and large language models, which uh, have become one of the most important topics of the moment. Um, it's very early stage, but we have investment firms, companies from healthcare giants to industrial companies figuring out new ways to implement large language models to improve efficiencies, um, streamline their processes, and, and cut costs. Uh, but not every large language model is destined to succeed. And that's going to be the key question we're going to answer today with our panel. Uh, I think the best place for us to start is maybe with what has worked. So if you all could maybe share a use case implementing large language model deployment that has been successful. Um, maybe Robert, do you want to start with that? Uh, sure. So in our experience, the large language models are good by definition in the understanding the structure of the language. And therefore, classification, summarization, um, data extraction is the areas where they really work. Maybe not as exciting as signal detection, uh, but these are the most proven cases. So a few quick examples. Um, uh, you could get the the machine to study thousands of um, open source intelligence articles in Chinese or reports in Chinese to distill the anecdotes about how local markets are or are not responding to the latest stimulus measures. This may not be a quantitative matrix, but it would be prohibitively expensive to do as a human. So that's one, one example. But that could also be that you monitor 40 major central banks globally, including all the feds. And, and, and whatever they are saying, not what's written and published, and many people focus on that, but more the, the, the weak signal from some side conference talk by uh, a Fed governor and the expressed thoughts on inflation in academic context. That's the interesting signal. So picking up those, those it's now much more doable. Um, you could have an analyst looking at FTX bankruptcy proceedings, um, hedge fund analysts, and you have thousands of files there, and um, you know maybe this legalese could be translated into a human speak with an LLM. That's another use case we've we've seen in the UK. We have a wealth of documents like UK Companies House, kind of a bit like a SEC filings here, where there was a gold mine of data in image PDF format, but LLMs can read it better, extract financial data, or compare documents where Google DeepMind discloses their financials there. So these are a few examples. Uh, they're less less exciting in terms of prediction, but they really uh, they really work. So I can give two examples. I'll give one from the Federal Reserve and one from uh, some past work I did in signal detection. But at the Federal Reserve, we use language models for a bank examination. As you know, we get you know hundreds of thousands of documents which we have to look to see if various risks exist in different banks and the things are being remediated and so on. And we found language models to be excellent at doing searching and classification and statistics on these problems, including finding new risks as they crop up because people start discussing them. And then you can see that. And it was particularly effective during the lockdown when our examiners couldn't uh, go on premises to banks and had to just receive PDFs. and were, overwhelmed having to go through it on their on their own and keyword search wasn't adequate the great thing about the language model is you can search for ideas and concepts not just particular words now i know you're all interested in signal detection so one of the things that i did with language models before coming with the fed is used it to look at social media and also aggregated uh the data by where people worked so you could see what everyone was saying say at amazon or what everyone was saying at google or what everyone was saying at Facebook. And then you could do a psychometric analysis and see if there's positive emotion or negative emotion so it can go beyond sentiment. And you, it was particularly effective with uh, drug companies identifying approvals that hadn't been announced and things like that. Uh, I think these are some really good examples. Um, I will speak on behalf of like financial industry. I think I would just add what Harry was saying. We have a bunch and bunch of unstructured data, which is like mostly in the PDF format. More often, there is no standardization. So it has historically been taking a lot of um, you know, the human effort to analyze those and um, to, go, to do all the analysis, due diligence work. And that's where one place I feel like AI can make major difference. 
Um, and also I'm seeing is like one, uh, which is not a use case, but I'm seeing it's a mindset change is earlier, you know, whenever as a technologist, if you go to any of the stakeholders, and I'm talking about the business partners or people who are like purely in business, um, they're like old school uh, thoughts are there and they always, you have to chase them to convince that, hey, this is the latest technology and let's just use them, implement in our workspace. And suddenly with AI, the, the whole direction is different. Stakeholders are chasing us. We want AI. <laughs> we want AI in XYZ domain. We want AI as much as possible. And I feel like with that, more and more use cases are, are you know, just coming in every day. Um, so I echo uh, the use cases that you have all mentioned. I'll put them in the bucket of knowledge management, uh, kind of letting the LLM uh, understand and make sense of a whole bunch of diverse data, and then you would be able to actually ask very interesting questions from it. But another area that I have seen quite a bit of success using large language models is around legacy code modernization. Uh, we still have quite a bit of old legacy code uh, in, the, in the enterprises. And it's becoming uh, quite a bit harder to find folks who can understand those legacy languages and maintain them and fix bugs on them and everything else. And we all know how much it actually costs to get those legacy codes and then try to modernize it into something more, uh, more, more modern, something that actually runs in the cloud or something else. LLMs can actually do quite a bit of, of help uh, to software engineers in that area. And we are seeing some very concrete uh, use cases in those worlds with, uh, with very high ROIs uh, right now. So 